The Falklands War officially began on the 2nd of April 1982 and it raged for 74 days. At the end of the conflict between Britain and Argentina, 255 British forces personnel, 649 Argentinians and three Falklanders were dead. It began over a long-standing row over sovereignty over the Falkland Islands, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, all of which remain to this day self-governing British territories, some of our 15 or so remaining Crown dependencies. As the 30th anniversary of the war approaches, there have been some high-profile controversies over whether the islands should remain British or be handed over to Argentina or indeed be given complete autonomy. Pop singers like Morrissey and the Hollywood actor Sean Penn have gone on record saying the islands belong to Argentina. But a poll this month in the Guardian newspaper revealed that some 61% of British voters say Britain should protect the Falklands so long as the islanders want protecting, no matter what the cost. It seems that just 32% believe Britain should be ready to negotiate with Argentina over a handover. And as the 30th anniversary of the conflict approaches, and with Prince William fresh from his routine posting there, some 61% of voters of Conservative, Labour and Liberal backgrounds say that Britain should continue to administer the islands. Now to discuss this topic, I'm joined on the line by Andrei Kulikov, Senior Research Fellow at the Centre for British Studies at the Institute of Europe, Dr Alistair Pinkerton, Lecturer in Geography and Geopolitics at Royal Holloway, University of London, here in the studio. And also in the studio, Dr. Abhijit Pandya, an international lawyer and blogger for the Daily Mail. And Nicholas Fuster, who's a student of international relations, who is from Argentina. I'll just ask you all to answer very briefly, first of all, and then we'll go on to the discussion. Dr. Pinkerton, Falklands, should they be British or not? I think it's a very complicated question. Clearly, as a as somebody from from Britain, um, I and somebody who's visited the Falkland Islands, all I can say is that the Falkland Islanders themselves would say absolutely yes. We are British. We wish to remain British for the seal for the foreseeable future. Uh, Doctor Pandya, how do you feel? The islands are our British territory. I think. Uh, Anything uh, to the contrary of that is, is basically not sound in international law and um, it's basically a sort of PR exercise for Argentinian politicians to get a one-up sort of um, uh, on, 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 uh, in, in any sort of electoral campaign they wish to uh, pursue. Nicholas Foster, presumably you feel differently. Uh, I do indeed, yes. Because I think that one thing is the rights of the uh, islanders and something else is the territory that is under the sea shelf of another country. They're not islands in the middle of nowhere. They belong to to see and the sea belongs to, to another country. And Andrei Kulikov in, in Moscow, uh, do you have an opinion or is it, uh, does this seem like a, a very far away struggle between Britain and Argentina? Uh, yes, I do. And uh, I believe that uh, the islands will remain British in foreseeable future, but finally they will be given an autonomy. OK, well, the history of, for, of the Falklands being uh, squabbled over by not just Britain, but uh, Britain and Argentina and indeed France and Spain in years gone by has been going on for some uh, 400 years in total. Um, Nicholas Fuster, you're an Argentinian. Um, why does Argentina want these scraps of rock in the middle of a very cold sea so much? Um, I will, f I will um, ask the question on the other side. I will say, why does England want this couple of rocks in the middle of nowhere and far and away from 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 Britain? The islands said before belong to the um, to the sea uh, shelf of Argentina. In the year 19, 18, 22, 28, 1828, there was an Argentine representation there, and the, there were ships of the United States and of Eng of the United Kingdom. Shipping, um, yes, the, the sailors were, were um, sailing around and they didn't want to pay the fee to work there. So as they were much powerful than the local rep representation of the islands, they sent the uh, governor who was called Luis Maria Fernet, they sent him to Montevideo and they destroyed all the archery there and they settled down there. Since then, it was in 1833, as you may know, the United Kingdom has settled down in the, uh, in the islands and since, since then they are, they are developing the, the activities. So it's like, I think, of five generations of of um, British people there, so of course they are British, and they, they say they want to remain British, and it's fine. They have always been British. 
So you can see a situation where the island has uh, remained British, but the the territory is administered by Argentina. Or? Def definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I I think that both governments should work together to find a solution, respecting the um, the right of the islanders. Uh, Dr. Pandya, as a lawyer, uh, what's your feeling on that? I mean, these uh, colonial adventures uh, seem very outdated to us now. Um, what would be wrong with allowing that sort of arrangement to come into being? Well, I, th I think the, the premise is there is fundamentally flawed and dangerous, which is that territorial annexation occurs by virtue of proximity. If you ran territorial control of countries on that basis, the, war, the world would be a far less safe place. And I think that what, what is here is basically a retro, what we have here is a retrospective claim by Argentina. One has to remember historically, of course, that uh, Britain was there in 1690, um, before Argentina as a state even existed. But the problem today we have is in a, in a post-UN period where uh, territorial integrity must be sacrosanct and also fair self-determination, um, uh, a key value in international law, to claim that something is a territory of yours simply because it's next door to you or near you, that's very worrying. A claim on that alone cannot have a solid foundation in law. Um, it's, not, it's not a sensible road to go down. I'm, I'm very concerned about the language used by the Argentine President Kirchner um, about uh, regarding the Falkland Islands. This is not language which helps um, international peace and security or supports the UN position. Um, on the line, Andrei Kulikov in Moscow. W what's your position there as, as uh, someone at the British Studies Institute? Uh, what, what is your position on, um, you know, territory not being given automatically to the country which lies closest to it? Oh, well, actually, uh, the question is, a complicated one and it's quite difficult to uh, transfer any territory from one country to another. It's a question of international prestige and economic benefits. Uh, we have uh, issues of oil exploration near the islands and uh, we have uh, the issue of uh, international prestige both uh, for uh, Britain and Argentina in this question. But in fact, I think that uh, both countries will find uh, the solution, and as far as I can see, uh, this solution lies within economic development of the region of the islands, I mean, and uh, right now we have Argentina with Mercosur countries behind it, and we have Britain with its weight and international influence, uh, so... Right now, this question doesn't have a solution, but I believe that economic conditions of the islands will be improved over the next years, uh, maybe decades, and then the islands will be given the right to form its own administration, and this solution, I believe, will be the best one. Dr. Alistair Pinkerton from Royal Holloway, I think of all of us here, you're the only one who's spent time in the Falkland Islanders. Can you give us a perspective on what you found there and what you feel the Falkland Islanders themselves might wish for in the long term? Well, I have to say, first of all, that, that Falkland Islanders are an incredibly hardy, resolved kind of bunch who just frankly get on with things and would rather actually just live their lives than worry about bigger political issues. But in in all the time that I've spent there in the research that I've done with Falkland Islanders, the one thing that comes to be very clear is that they are, they are British, they identify themselves as British. They see themselves as part of uh, a, kind of a, a broader network of, of, kind of British influence around the world involving the Commonwealth. They see themselves as a profoundly modern kind of state. And I think that modernity is partly influenced by the development of the fishing industry. Of course, we now have oil industry uh, as well, potentially developing tourism. They're an outward looking people, but they would also say that they're not monocultural. They are a diverse population. Uh, one of the criticisms that's often led against them, particularly from an Argentine perspective, is that Argentines aren't allowed to visit. And I think they would be very keen to point out that that is, that is not the case, that there, there is active and healthy tourism between Argentina, largely using the cruise line industry. Uh, but, but they see themselves nonetheless, despite their relative proximity to Argentina, and I say relative because they are still 300 plus miles away from the, from the Argentine coast. But nonetheless, you know, in, in the modern world, with telecommunications as they are, they can remain in contact and they can remain culturally identifiable with the United Kingdom.
Is there any sense in which people there are exposed to Latin American culture? I mean, is there any sort of, presumably there are trade links and there were in the past stronger links? Yeah, sure. Before 1982, there was an active uh, trade link, but with Argentina, um, Falkland Islanders would talk about going and visiting the, the Harrods department store that was in Buenos Aires, uh, you know, for a long time. You know, they would they would buy their they would buy their carpets and domestic goods in Argentina. Now, of course, post 1982, that link doesn't exist, and so there's now a m- much more active trade link with with Chile. Uh, which is, I, I suppose, the, the most loyal country in South America to the, to the Falkland Islanders' cause. Uh, but, e- but even those kind of trade links have become uh, put under increasing pressure, not least because of Argentine threats to, to close down the, the air link uh, with, uh, with Santiago and Stanley. Um, but as we know, famously, the price of eggs in Stanley has, you know, has now peaked at over a pound per egg. Oranges are in short supply. People are desperate for fresh fruit because some of those traditional connections with Latin American ports, because of Argentine-backed sanctions, uh, are forcing the islanders into a very difficult situation. It was always, of course, strongly reported in the British press at the time of the war in 1982 that Argentina's real motive for invading Falklands was to take attention away from its own internal problems and again it's been said here in the press that uh, President Kirshner is again using this as a sort of emotional uh, flag waving exercise. Nicholas Fuster, I mean is this an emotional thing you feel about the Falkland Islands or is it a, a matter of right for you that you feel that, that, that Argentina really has a strong legal and political desire to incorporate the islands? Uh, I think it's both. <clears throat> I, I, I do think it's both. Uh, it's true that um, I'm so sorry because of the war. I'm so sorry that we had this military government. We have, we Argentina as a country, had many military governments. The last one was the worst one, the most terrible one. And the war was a way to try to, yeah, uh, to let's speak about something else, you know, and maybe we win. And if we win, then the militaries are going to be uh, good and not, but, um, well, we all know how the, um, how it ended. This is something that the state should um, should work for not this government. I don't mind if this government, the next one, or the one before. Uh, I think that this is something that Argentina as a country should should sort out. And uh, it's the same with England. Um, Margaret Thatcher had many many problems by the times of the war, but England had a, m- a most powerful army than Argentina. That's why they won. Um, and and the same now for Cameron. If Cameron can keep the islands, it's going to be, be- better for him because he have he has many problems with NHS students relationship with Europe well you know um, so I think that this is political of course the one who wins is is you know is, is going to use it as, as a speech uh, for a is it still well. important to uh, Abhijit Pandya is it still important for Britain to be seen to be strong enough to keep the Falklands do you think but more importantly from the self-determination issue <coughs> and consistency in foreign policy um, Britain at the moment backs um, backs Kosovo and independence. And I think that is, a, for example, a far more difficult case of self-determination because you have a, a sub-state, a sub-territorial unit within a larger state. And if you're saying that there is a case for identity there, um, I think you have to maintain the pol- foreign policy consistency and say there's also one um, for, the, uh, uh, for the people of the Falkland Islands. And it's clear that the people of the Falkland Islands want to be a part of Britain. It's historically been British territory. And I think that um, I think there's also um, a, a geopolitical angle here that that one is able to um, protect and enforce um, uh, effectively um, inf- enforce the territorial integrity of the Falkland Islands uh, despite of their distance. So I think um, those are all important values. And also above all of those things is, is the fact that um, interference with, a, with, what, which is, with what is a territorially independent unit which wants to be a part of Britain is, is something that, that is contrary to the spirit of the United Nations Charter. I, I don't understand quite where Argentina wants to go with this. I don't see the point, long-term policy objective by pursuing this. So it it appears to be simply a sort of a PR exercise uh, which hasn't been thought through at all. What about the economic uh, aspects of all this? It's it's been rumoured, perhaps Andrei Kulikov in Moscow, you can uh, give us your view. Is the potential oil industry, as Alistair Pinkerton mentioned earlier, is that something that's getting people more interested in the Falklands than they might otherwise be? Uh, Yes, I think so. And uh, economic interests are very important. And uh, I I think that uh, the outcome of 
all exploration and tourism might be might have uh, some positive consequences in uh, resolution of this dispute between Argentina and Britain. Nicholas, first of all, representing Argentina as you are today by default. Um, can we get to the bottom of this? Uh, you said it is both a political question and an emotional connection. Do, do most people in Argentina really care? Yes. Um, since we are um, student at, uh, studying at, at school, at elementary school, we are uh, taught that the, um, the islands belong to Argentina. In every single map you see Isla, Isla Malvinas. In 1976, the United Nations asked both governments to sit down and negotiate this issue before the military government started in Argentina. Started in Argentina, England has never sit down and negotiate this. Falkland Islanders would disagree with you about the the role of the the British government, particularly in potentially negotiating the future sovereignty of the Falkland Islands. Uh, Nicholas Ridley, who was a close ally of Margaret Thatcher just before 1982, flew to the Falkland Islands in order to to discuss joint sovereignty arrangements. And even though Falkland Islanders said, no, do not dare negotiate on these terms, he came back and made a recommendation to the British government that joint sovereignty should be pursued. That was just a case of a few months before the invasion in 1982. And actually, what, of course, has fundamentally changed, thing, changed things was the invasion. If anything, that has cemented a British opinion that the Falkland Islanders should have a right to, to self-determination, that they should be protected from potentially aggressive neighbours. And I'm not saying that they are still necessarily aggressive in the same way. But, you know, if Argentina is looking to win friends and influence people, I would suggest that organising things like blockades uh, of ports to British and Falkland Islands flagged vessels, uh, limiting supplies of fresh fruit and vegetables to Falkland Islanders, threatening the integrity of air links to, to Chile and elsewhere. That's not the right way to go about it. Falkland Islanders are already sceptical about, uh, about Argentina. Uh, in 1994, they, uh, 78% of Falkland Islanders said when interviewed for an opinion poll which was interestingly backed and paid for by uh, Argentine uh, businessmen, they said that they wouldn't trust Argentina uh, in any circumstances if sovereignty was ever negotiated. This is an issue of trust, I think. Um, and at the moment, Falkland Islanders trust their connection with the United Kingdom. They still view Argentina with some suspicion. And I think if Argentina wants to try and press its claim further, it needs to go on an all-out public diplomacy campaign not these kind of modern, aggressive tactics, which, you know, frankly, have the feel of, of old colonial strategies. Gunboat diplomacy, blocking, blocking ports, that's not the way to win the affections of the Falkland but, Islands so, population. So, do, you know, do you know how, do you know how, how bad it feels um, that you have another country, another country forces on, your country, on a territory that belongs to you? Be not because Argentina is the closest... Um, country to the islands, but because it, the islands are, are, you know, inside the, the sea shelf, and I think that this is this is important. Um, you know how how horrible it is that they are there, and you can. There is no way for you to, to to take it out. It's like someone you know living in a room of your house, and because that one is bigger or m more powerful or whatever, you, there is no way for you to to take them out. It's it's not nice at all. If, if I may just come back on, on that point briefly, I, I'm totally sensitive to, to the Argentine opinion. I, if I had been brought up looking at maps of the Faroe Islands, which, as we know, belong to Denmark, they're about 300 miles north of the, of the United Kingdom mainland, and I had always seen those as being UK-marked territory, if I saw flags and maps that showed those islands as part of the uh, you know, coherent United Kingdom, of course, I would be distressed when I ultimately found out that they in fact belonged or were occupied by a different population. But I think I think what you have to remember is that there there is a, a, an amazing cultural campaign that is exercised on, on the Argentine population. I've been to Argentina, I've seen the flags, I've seen the maps that always incorporate, you know, Las Malvinas as part of uh, as part of the uh, broader Argentine uh, state. Talk to Falkland Islanders, though. You know, they, they have been there since 1833. No, that, Some of them are in their ninth, tenth generation. And it's not their fault that, that no, Argentine I'm, I'm, maps I'm not don't saying that it's their fault, but I'm, I'm just saying that they are not the local population. They have been taken there in an illegal way. And I'm saying, my personal opinion is, let's, let's work together. I'm not saying that we have to kill them, we have to send them back to England. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, let's Which work... Great relief for, right <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it does, just to break in there, I mean, I'd, I'd like to bring in Dr. Pandya again. I mean... 
there is an emotional argument here. There is also a geographical argument. But uh, the fact is, you've referred to it earlier. There are a lot of uh, historical anom anomalies around the world, aren't there, in terms of territory, distance and proximity to Argentina, albeit within the continental shelf, uh, as Nicholas Fuster points out, don't necessarily make the islands Argentine, do they? Well, they don't. And uh, I, I think also sovereignty, the sort of issue of sovereignty from the continental shelf is not one which is concrete at all in international law. Um, the basic uh, but the basic starting point is one has one's internal waters and those uh, that is part of one's sovereignty but those certainly do not extend anything like 250 miles which is the distance from Argentina that the Falkland Islands are so I think there's an extremely dubious basis upon which um, <coughs> to push forward a claim for sovereignty but the other thing is going back on the school issue um, I think it's appalling that Argent uh, Argentinians schools teach this you know if for example british schools today taught that southern the republic of ireland should technically still be a part of britain even though it isn't and that was pumped into every every british school boy and girl and and then everyone felt oh god you know we shouldn't have given ireland away during um during just before the during um the first second decade of, of, of the last century um that would be really really an awful awful way of conducting one's education system and that wouldn't actually make harmonious relationships between the republic of ireland and you know, the united kingdom uh, i think that's exactly what's happened here i think it it, it really is it, it there isn't really an issue here at all it's one that's been created and pumped up by argentina and i think they need to stop telling their kids this and i think they need to stop going on about it in their press um, let me bring in uh, Andrei Kulikov again. Um, looking at it from a, a Russian perspective, um, what do you think the, the legal uh, future of the islands will be? Uh, <clears throat> as I already told in the beginning, uh, I think that uh, the islanders will be given the right to form uh, their own administration in the long run. Right. It will be... The example relevant to, uh, I think, Gibraltar or Hong Kong. I mean, Dr. Pinkerton, you mentioned the Faroe Islands, of course, the, the islands that I'm quite familiar with. In fact, uh, the, the islanders there very much feel they have a strong local identity. All right, they're a tiny community of only 50,000-odd people, but they think that the Faroes should be a... An, a a completely autonomous nation because they have a strong local culture. Nicholas Fuster, do you accept that the islanders in Falklands, I mean, they're the only human beings who've been there for hundreds of years, that they, they regard it as their own, potentially, their own country? Definitely, definitely. This is something that no one can deny, I think. Um, but, it, I mean, as long as there are people of British descent who call themselves Falkland Islanders, uh, you're saying that you sympathize with their position, so you wouldn't no, automatically would, no, make no, them no, Argentinian. No, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is I think that the islands should be under Argentine government. But remain, in some sense, the Falklands who have their own identity. They, they, but they, they, you, cannot, you cannot destroy the, the culture of a town. And they have their own culture, which is getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And I, th I think it's normal, I think it's fine. I mean, I think it's fine and I think that it's bad. It's something that happens and it, it's, it's normal. It, that's, it, that, that's the way it goes. So I'm, I, what I'm saying is let's work together for these people to keep on living their lives as, as, as so far. You know? and, but the islands, I, I'm just saying that the islands should be not protected by another, another um, country because they don't have to be protected against anything. So do you think Argentina would be able to give some kind of binding legal guarantee to the islanders that Argentina would not interfere in the, their affairs? The, this is my personal opinion. I'm not talking for the government or for the state of Argentina. I think that this, the, what you're saying is, w should be or would be the best solution. But this is, again, my personal opinion. I'm thinking, I think that yeah, we, sh we should respect the, uh, the lives and the, um, and the rights and, and the rights to keep on living as, as until now they've done, but under the Argentine government. Alistair Pinkerton, um, sadly, we haven't got a Falkland Islander here uh, with us, but um, having lived there and spent time there, um, how British are they, in fact? I mean, they are a very long way away and they must have a, a local way of doing things. Yeah, people people often say that they're as British in fish and, as fish and chips, and in a way that's true, but also in a way that doesn't really reflect uh, the kind of the modern feel of, of Stanley and the Falkland Islands uh, as a community. It, it harks back to kind of you know, a bygone a bygone era. Uh, most most people who live there, are, you know, are of British extraction one way or another. 
Uh, many of the families who live there are from the original settlers in 1833. They're in their ninth or tenth or sometimes even eleventh generation uh, of being Falkland uh, Islanders. And I, I don't think it's also fair to say that, that they are just some kind of offshoot or, or colony of the United Kingdom. There is a distinct Falkland Islands identity. They identify themselves as Falkland Islanders. They have a very clear connection with, with the Falkland Islands as, uh, as their homeland. Um, and they're terribly proud of it. Um, you know, they may say we're British, but I think pr first and foremost, first and foremost, they would say we are Falkland Islanders. Um, coming back to Nicholas's point, um, you know, as I said, 78% of Falkland Islanders just frankly don't trust Argentina to keep to keep its promises. And I think that's one of the main stumbling blocks that Argentina is going to find uh, going forward uh, with this question. They they want to remain British, and I think that's the way they will remain for this. Uh, the, for the foreseeable future. We don't have too much time left, but I'd like to ask you all uh, briefly, uh, Dr. Pandya, first of all, can Britain afford to keep administering and uh, supporting the Falkland Islands? I mean, the original war cost billions, according to some estimates, and um, they're not giving an awful lot back to Britain at the moment. It, it, wouldn't we be better off financially sending them over to be uh, supported in some way by Argentina? Um, I, I think the, the, the three points I made earlier about consistency in foreign policy or self-determination, supporting the UN Charter, supporting the global idea of territorial integrity of, of um, territorial units and, uh, and, and existing territorial security in the United Kingdom, all of those things are worth pursuing. At, at any our, cost? At uh, any price? Um, uh, well, not at the cost of... For example, um, loss of territorial control of the United Kingdom itself, for example, in the time of war. But I think generally are worth a huge amount of cost. And I think it's important that Britain does, um, if, it, if it has to, um, say, um, police the, the, the surrounding waters and so on, th those costs should be maintained by Britain. Um, because I think the idea of supporting the independence of the island, the idea of self-determination, is a really important integral part of global peaceful relations. That's something that we cannot afford to sort of detract from in any way. So I think it's worth a huge price. I think... Um, also, if you don't do this, you send a message out that a country that can keep claiming for year in, year out, as Argentina does, over a territory which it has you know, dubious rights over, it, 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 the people of that country don't want, people of the Falkland Islands don't want to be a part of Argentina. You set a general precedent down for this to happen in other parts of the world. Uh, Nicholas, first I just want to ask you, uh, as we wind up, I don't know Argentina, but I've always been told that British people who go there get a very warm reception and that it's perhaps the country in South America with which Britain has most in common. It, it, uh, is that true? Is, that, is there an anti-British sentiment at all in, in Argentina? I would say not personally because I have many English friends because I, I've chosen London as a place to live. Of course, there is a feeling of if you, if you name Britain or United Kingdom, of course, people will think, you know, in, in, the, Mal in the Malvinas. I think it's the same here. Of course, not all, everyone are going to say, oh, yeah, you're from Argentina. You know, the war and the 1982. Of course not. And so I think that if you're English or if you're German, if you're French or whatever, um, you're going to be welcome. And people in Argentina are getting used to receive tourists and to treat them well, you know, because this is the way it should, it should be. OK, well, I think we probably all agree that we, we don't want to see conflict break out uh, again. But for now, uh, Nicholas Fuster, Dr. Abhijit Pandya, uh, Dr. Alistair Pinkerton and Andrei Kulikov in Moscow, thank you all for joining us here today on The Voice of Russia talking about the Falkland Islands.